welcome to the channel physics by iitians thank you so much for your support that we successfully crossed 1.5k subscriber and do support us so that we can do lot more videos for you so today this video is very important the topic we shall discuss electron spin vector model of the atom or vector atom model and my heartily request please watch the full video because we will discuss much more things and much more physics deeply so that you can get the benefit and the physics you should know that is our main motto that the physics behind the mathematics or you should know about that so that you won't face any problem while facing any interview okay so let's start so today we shall discuss about the electron spin or vector model of the atom so before discussing what is electron spin or what is ve vector model we should know the background of the discovery so the background was we know the sommerfeld theory sommerfeld correction relativistic correction theory then sommerfeld come up with his space quantization but still there was some problem the problems the doublet structure of the alkali spectral lines cannot be explained with that existing theory anomalous zeeman effect cannot be explained so there was some missing line or there was some gap between the existing theory and between the real field so how to overcome it so they cannot understand that normal zeeman effect summerfeld can understand that okay if we take uh, if we some uh, quantize the plane of the orientation of the electron and we get another quantum number ml with as well as n l so we get extra quantum number ml and he find out that from normal zeeman effect we can already know that if you have some certain uh, field in external magnetic field Uh, the spectral line will be splitted into three lines and it can be described or explained by this space quantization rule but the normal zeeman effect which is the splitting of spectral lines into three components one is the original and other shifting will be delta the not plus delta nu not or plus minus delta nu not so it can be explained with this orbital magnetic moment vector or magnetic moment quantum number but the more observed uh, phenomena that is anomalous zeeman effect where the spectral line splitting is more than three lines and it cannot be explained by sommerfeld theory so that was a huge problem that why it is not expect, uh, cannot be explained and the line number of lines are greater than 3 or doublet structure that is the d line of sodium um, can be splitted in d1 d2 lines so what are the problems here what are the problems you have to understand that the more lines means there are more energy level splitting because more energy level splitting will give you more different different uh, energy levels that will give different lambdas or different wavelengths so that is the main thing that whenever there are more lines you are observing means the uh, existing quantum numbers that is principal quantum number or um, angular quantum uh, number or ml that is magnetic quantum number that are not enough to define or to explain the uh, spectral lines we need some more now that there is the gap that why should what is that quantity and in search of that thing and also to explain the space quantization that sommerfeld gave us two dutch physicists in 1925 they find out uh, that uh, uh, they gave an proposal okay they find out that if atom uh, like uh, earth is revolving around the sun and it is also spinning around while revolving around the sun why should an electron it should also be spinning while revolving in its orbit round the nucleus so according to them the earth spin about its own axis while revolving round the sun so the electron while revolving in its orbit round the nucleus has a spinning motion with the intrinsic spin angular momentum p s equals to s h cross where s is equals to half that is known as spin quantum number and ps is the spin angular momentum vector or mu s is the corresponding angular momentum spin angular momentum like 
PL is the orbital angular momentum vector. So, mu L is corresponding orbital angular moment, magnetic moment. Okay. So, we, we, we find out the ratio of mu S by P S equals to G S into E by twice M E that this G S equals to 2 that is experimentally verified or experimental result. So, we get mu S equals to 2 into E by twice M E into P S equals to E by M E into now find out uh, put the value of P S, P S equals to S into H cross and S is half. So, you find the uh, you put the value h cross by 2 e by m e so e h cross by 2 s m e that should be mu b so mu s equals to mu b we get and from quantum mechanically we know that p l equals to or rather you can write it as l and you can write it as s in the modern terms ok so l equals to root over l into l plus 1 h cross and s equals to root over s into s plus 1 h cross now this is the theory that two Dutch physicists Wollenbeck and Goudsmit proposed with the analogy of the motion of the earth. Okay. Now, what is the proposal? What is the background of that proposal? You should know. So, before pro discussing the much more vector atom model, I think we should go and know what is the spin theory that the proposed by Wollenbeck and Goudsmit. What is the background? So, we have to go past that is they proposed in 1925 and in 1921 Stern and Gerlich, two German physicists they performed an experiment. What was their motto? Their aim was that at that moment the Summerfeld space quantization theory was existing and they need to verify it whether there is really space quantization of electronic motion or not ok that was their motto but you will understand that how different different experiments will give us different different results and that give with a beautiful physics ok that come with a beautiful physics so the experimental they need the experimental but this that they need a experimental proof of quantization of space but it gives us the experimental proof of the existence of the magnetic moment associated with the spin of the electron what they did they took silver atoms that is neutral atoms and the normal state of the silver atom is 2s half so l equals to 0 there means there is no orbital angular momentum for their ground state so mu l should be 0 now magnetic moments are entirely due to spin ok so they apply they, there will be two cases they can apply two kind of magnetic field one is the homogeneous magnetic field another is the inhomogeneous magnetic field but what they have did ha, they da, do they applied inhomogeneous magnetic field why is it so because they want to understand the force due to the magnetic field and due to that force the translation of the neutral atom that is silver atoms due to the existing magnetic moment within that atom ok so what they did if this agne, agne, atomic magnet is placed in an inhomogeneous magnetic field a net translatory force acts upon it in the direction of the field so this force acting on the two poles of the magnet are now different so this different due to difference in forces the energy of the atom in the external b field is w equals to g into mu b into mj into b suppose this is spin up so okay let us forget about this first we should know about the experimental setup what they did they place in homogeneous magnetic field in the form of different shaped magnets so that the lines of force in this region will be different than this region ok so different lines of force mean different magnetic field strength so different magnetic field strength means in homogeneous magnetic field now it is a silver oven uh, this is a oven silver atoms were heated and it get uh, it was collimated it was passed through small slit and it passed through the inhomogeneous magnetic field 
and it then split up into two ways one upward and one downward okay you can also see the next image here suppose okay this is the that was for the silver atom where l equals to 0 this is not for l equals to 0 this is where l has certain value that is ml ml can have 0 plus 1 minus 1 values what it can be observed that some of the atoms will get no deflection some of the atom will get deflection upward and some of the atoms get deflection downward so look here did this will show you a very beautiful space quantization phenomena in a real way I mean you can feel that electrons uh, the moment magnetic moments orbital magnetic moment sp spin magnetic moment they cannot orient randomly rather they are oriented in a defined way or they are quantized okay so now we will find out what will be the force that is acting on the electron uh, electron so that its energy uh, in the external magnetic field the energy will be g into mu b into mj into b where mj is ml plus ms where ml is the quantum orbit, uh, orbital quantum number ms is the spin quantum number now after calculation the force we will get that f equals to minus dw dz because suppose the inhomogeneity is along the z direction so the force will be applied suppose the electrons are the atoms are going along y direction and the force that is applied along the z direction in terms of the magnetic field due to the magnetic field so we get force as minus dw by dz and this inhomogeneity due to the inhomogeneous magnetic field and that will get minus g into mu b into mj into db dz so here you can get that when f increases db dz also increases okay now when no magnetic field there should be beam travels undeflected towards p p is the photographic plate where you are collecting the atoms okay now when in inhomogeneous b field what they observe they observe that each silver atom in the beam is acted upon by a translatory force at right angles to the path of the beam because f will be q into v cross b so the force they will realize or th that will be applied that is perpendicular to the path of that atom and they will incident on p that is photographic plate slightly off the axis not like the origin they will slightly off the axis means they will be deflected now beam splits into two and produces two short lines on the photographic plate so if it is your photographic plate p you will get two short lines on the photographic plate which is off axis now this is a direct proof of space quantization that is mj equals to plus minus half where j equals to l plus if suppose here l equals to 0 so 0 plus half is the total angular momentum that is half so 2j plus 1 will be 2 so there will be possibly two orientations and 2j plus 1 is 2 that will the two different orientation will give you the spin value that is plus half and minus half i was thinking about how to tell you what the spin magnetic moment or spin vector value has plus half or minus half in terms of for the fermions because here is direct experimental proof that when there is l is 0 and mu l is 0 so there is only mu s and this magnetic moment is due to the spin magnetic moment and you are directly getting the result that the atoms are splitted into two parts so they can have orientations of 2j plus 1 values so 2j plus 1 will be 2 only when j equals to half so as l equals to 0 since l equals to 0 s should be half 
so spin value should be half since it can be upward or downward so spin value can be plus half or minus half okay now the experiment was later done using beams of hydrogen lithium sodium potassium copper au etc okay now you understand that whenever there is a shifting so you can be under you should know what is the formula of that shifting that is the deflection of the beam and after calculations if you take certain simple calculations you get the force that mu b into dv dz along the z direction and you get the acceleration that is fz by m so it will be mu z by m into dv dz where mass m is the mass of the ag atom now if l is the length of the path in the field and time traverses t equals to l by v so displacement along the z direction should be half into ft square so it should be mu v by m db by dz l by v whole square and the most proper velocity of ag atom is root over 2 kt by m where we get the value of d so you put this value of v in d formula that you get d that is shifting or translation transverse translation is plus minus mu b into db by dz l square by 4 kt so this transverse translation you find out with this formula okay now the physics you need to know that suppose you are doing repeating the stern garlic experiment for two or three times suppose what i am trying to say you are repeating this same experiment this is your experiment setup you get two different components one for the spin up another for spin down now you block one and you send this spin uh, a different another component suppose this is spin up this is spin down so you send this spin down uh, in another set of stern garlic experiment and you are measuring the spin along the x direction that is you are putting this inhomogeneous field along the x direction it was earlier along the z direction what will happen if you put the same stern garlic experiment that is suppose this is along z direction now you put the stern garlic experiment setup where homogeneous inhomogeneous field along x direction and you perform the experiment and you get some spin value and then you then again set up the same stern garlic experiment value and you pass only one component what will happen so in classically the spin is whenever some spinning top that is rotating it is only one rotation one kind of rotation either clockwise or anti clockwise but here you will certainly find out that if you this experiments for twice thrice for five times six times 100 times blocking one of the one any one of the spin component the spin component will not be zero or the spin component along z axis may be plus um, may be up in some experiment in some trial it may be down it's in some trial it may be up in some trial it may be down in some trial by trial i want to tell you the different different experiments that you are trialing to find out the spin alignment so that is the thing what i want to tell you the spin alignment is not like a classical way that the electron is like a classical moment it is revolving around this way so it would, it should be spin up for all the time or it is revolving around this uh, uh, like this way it should be spin down like all the time it is not like that if you simultaneously perform um, the stern garlic experiment putting one of the suppose only one of the component you are sending and you are making another component blocked classically you should think that the spin component along z direction means there is no component along x direction there is no component along y direction sx sy should also be some uh, should also be zero but whenever you are experimenting the stern garlic experiment for different orientations whether you are blocking any of the spin component always you get certain values okay so spin is not a classical thing here the spin 
here in this picture the suppose this is a uh, this is the spin okay the spin of the motion look here the spin of the motions has three components sx sy and sz so this can be orient like this way or certainly it can be like oriented like this way this is telling you the spin up direction this is telling you the spin down directions and in quantum mechanically all are possible so all linear combinations are possible okay whether you are measuring it when you are measuring it but it cannot remember its previous state after the measurement it will forget its state okay so the spin is not the classical motion of spinning like spinning top of the electron here spin of the electron is an intrinsic property of the electron next video we will discuss about the vector atom model deeply so thank you friends thank you for watching if you like the video if we find the video is helpful please share with your friends and also share uh, subscribe to the channel thank you